not need to create millions of tiny little iterations of our programs in order to just reach in and edit the darn code. Would you ever have John Coza debate you on this? Just curious. Uh, I would be happy to, de to debate him if anyone asked me to do that, but I'm not sure we would, I, I don't know yet if we would actually have a disagreement. I mean, the fact that you can get enormous amounts of mileage out of something today doesn't mean that it is the path to, to human level uh, and human plus AI. Okay. There's one down, it's front row. Hmm? Front row, right there. Repeat the question. Really. Um, the, the question is, can we estimate the threshold for recursive self-improvement? And my answer is, um, I don't quite see how you could do that because you'd have to be measure. I, I think you'd have to be measuring the time to a particular math breakthrough. But if anyone could graph that and measure it, it would be Ray Kurzweil. <laughs> I guess to simplify my question, what is the minimum amount of computing power you would need for a grenade? <laughs> um, an intelligence explosion <laughs> grenade, not just a regular grenade. Regular grenades require very little computing power. <laughs> um, Say for Einstein. I, 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 for really, I really think it depends on how clever you are about how you write the program. If I were to make a number up completely out of thin air without doing any calculations, which is therefore totally bogus and probably even more misleading than, than my just saying I don't know, I would guess that you could, that a billion operations per second could do it if you were um, clever enough and had maybe like another hundred years worth of science before you started trying to program it. It will not be created on a billion operations per second, but my guess is that a human could do it with another hundred years worth of AI science. Uh, my question has to do with the, uh, the relationship between the, uh, the, the binary uh, approach to uh, AI versus the cognitive. Early on you brought, uh, you brought up cog cognitive issues and I'm wondering whether uh, the, the, uh, the programming of cognitive issues actually changes their identity and converts them into, into binary and hence uh, removes the human being from the situation. Well, I, I think that that might be a sort of question about the role of logic and in artificial intelligence, and I think that artificial intelligence has come a long way from its logical days. Nowadays, we have probabilities, and there, um, if anyone's interested, there's a really, truly wonderful uh, book in, from 1987 called um, uh, Probabilistic Reasoning in Intelligent Systems, uh, Networks of Plausible Inference by Judea Pearl, um, which describes in some mathematical detail exactly what goes wrong if you try to use first order logic to describe reality. I think that um, if one went that route of the AI getting smarter and smarter and the humans playing less and less of a role, there would be an increasing pressure um, to remove the human from the system in terms of efficiency. You might keep them around because you have some kind of notion of permissive action links or something like that. But in terms of efficiency, you'd have a core component that was increasingly a bottleneck. I, imagine um, an AI that is thinking a million times as fast as its operator. That operator is going to be 
um, slowing down the system by a factor of thousands or even a million outright. So there's going to be a huge pressure to remove the slowest link in the system. Okay, I think that's about it. Thank you, Elias.